The current guidelines on PSA testing in Australia and overseas advise shared decision-making between the doctor and the patient. This video is an example of shared decision-making for PSA testing in a man with no symptoms. Potential benefits and harms of PSA testing need to be discussed to allow informed consent or informed refusal to proceed. The video will include three brief scenarios that model ways in which a discussion with the patient could proceed in different situations. Gary has come in as a new patient as his close friend recently had surgery for prostate cancer and he wants to talk about testing. Gary is a 69 year old man with no family history of prostate cancer and who is otherwise healthy and fit. There are no medical concerns that need attention. Hi, I'm just here to get the form for the prostate cancer test. Okay, but before I go ahead with that, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about prostate cancer and how we test for it. Prostate cancer is the second highest cause of cancer death in Australian men. The risk of getting prostate cancer goes up as you get older, if you have a family history, and once you're 75, the risk of getting prostate cancer is about one in seven. So testing for prostate cancer can mean an aggressive cancer can be detected in the early stages and cured. And this can really reduce your chance of dying from prostate cancer. Great, that's why I want to get tested. Okay, but the other side of the story is sometimes a harmless cancer might be picked up by the testing and that can cause some harm. Why could that cause harm? Well, prostate cancer is a little bit different to a lot of other cancers. It is usually very slow growing, so it's unlikely to cause any problems until at least seven years after diagnosis. So there's no point testing the very old or the very unwell men who are unlikely to live longer than seven years because we wouldn't actually do anything but about a positive result. And there are generally three groups of prostate cancer. There's the low grade ones that are unlikely to ever cause any harm. There's the aggressive high grade ones that can cause spread and can cause significant problems and death. And there's the intermediate ones that are a bit unpredictable and may be harmless or aggressive and so are generally treated. So testing might pick up an aggressive cancer, but it might also pick up a harmless cancer. Doesn't the test tell you if you have cancer and how bad it might be? No, we start with the PSA test. What's PSA? PSA, it stands for prostate specific antigen. It's a protein that's made in the prostate. If it's elevated in your bloodstream, it can mean that something's going on in the prostate. There might be a benign enlargement, there could be some infection in the prostate, or there might be cancer in the prostate. So the PSA doesn't really diagnose the cancer. That's right. So if your PSA is elevated, then it means we have to do some more tests to sort out what's going on in the prostate. So if your PSA was high, then I would repeat the test in two or three months time. If it was still high, then I'd refer you to a urologist. Uh, the urologist would do a digital rectal examination to feel the prostate and would likely arrange for you to have an MRI and, and a biopsy of the prostate. So would the biopsy tell me whether I had cancer? Yes, the biopsy is the main test to determine if there is prostate cancer and how aggressive the cancer might be. Samples of the prostate are taken via needles, um, which are inserted into the prostate via the rectum or through the skin between the scrotum and the anus. Ouch, that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, well, y you would be sedated via light anesthetic, but yes, afterwards you may feel a bit sore and you may have some blood in your urine, sperm or bowels. And rarely you can get a serious infection from the biopsy, which can land you back in hospital. So if I had an elevated PSA, and a biopsy, and the biopsy showed there was cancer, I guess that would mean that I'd have to have my prostate removed. Well, yes and no. In the old days, most cancers were treated and had the cancer removed or irradiated, but now it depends on what grade of cancer is detected. So if the biopsy shows you had a low-grade cancer, then you'd be closely monitored by the prostate cancer specialist uh, because recent evidence shows that many low-grade cancers will never cause harm and so treatment might be avoided. But if the biopsy shows an intermediate or high-grade cancer, then treatment with surgery to remove the prostate or radiation to kill off the prostate and the cancer would occur. Are there any side effects to those treatments? Yes, there are. There can be problem with bladder control. Most men recover, but some can have persistent bladder problems. 
Most men experience some difficulty with getting erections after treatment and this may or may not fully recover. Uh, some patients may have problems with diarrhea after radiation and also some men report anxiety living with a diagnosis of prostate cancer. Then there are also the rare standard operative and anaesthetic complications. So testing for prostate cancer can treat an aggressive cancer while it's curable but there can be harms from side effects of treatment or diagnosis of a harmless cancer. I can give you a pathology form now and you can go ahead with a test or you can think it over a little bit if you'd like. It's completely up to you. No, look, I'm, I'm happy to have the test. I already knew a little bit about this from talking to my mate, but it's just a little bit more involved than I had originally thought. If having the test is the way to go, then that's the way to go. Okay, well, I'll give you the referral form to have the blood test and do try and avoid sex or vigorous exercise for 48 hours before the blood test if you can, because that can affect the test. Then if you could please give us a call about three or four days after you've had it. Um, if it's elevated, I'll need to see you again to sort out the next step. Are there any other questions? No, no, that's great. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Well, that was pretty straightforward. Gary was at average risk with no symptoms and no family history and good life expectancy. He was keen to be tested for prostate cancer, but needed more information. Bob is 58 years old and presents after stepping on a nail in his garage. He says his last shot for tetanus was 12 years ago when he went overseas to Mexico. A full history and examination was unremarkable. There is no family history of prostate, ovarian or breast cancer and Bob is not currently experiencing any urinary symptoms. He's a non-smoker, his alcohol intake is moderate and he's not on any significant medication. There is no record of previous PSA testing. Okay, Bob, your arm will be a bit sore after the injection. And as I mentioned before, having a bowel cancer test is really worthwhile. Um, have you ever considered having a test for prostate cancer? No, not really. Um, I, I don't know much about it. I did see an article in the paper the other day by some expert doctor saying that we shouldn't have it. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not that sure. It has been a bit controversial, so if it's okay with you, I'd like to spend some time just going over the pros and cons of uh, being tested for prostate cancer. Yeah, that sounds fine. Prostate cancer is quite common and causes over 3,000 deaths in Australia per year. It's the second most common cause of cancer deaths in Australian men. A man's risk is higher as he gets older, if there's a family history of prostate, breast or ovarian cancer, or if there are symptoms relating to your bladder and your urine flow. So having a PSA test is the first step to see if you might have prostate cancer or not. There are three main types of prostate cancer. There's harmless ones that are unlikely to spread outside the prostate. There's the aggressive or potentially lethal types. And there's the intermediate ones that are a bit unpredictable and can go either way. So if you have a PSA test, it can lead to early detection of an aggressive prostate cancer while it's still contained within the prostate and hopefully can be treated and cured. What's involved in testing? The process is started by a blood test called a PSA or prostate specific antigen. If the PSA is high then I would refer you to a urologist. He would examine your prostate with a digital rectal examination. He would probably arrange an MRI of the prostate and get, get a biopsy to get a sample of the prostate cancer. If a harmless low grade cancer is detected then having treatment of the prostate cancer can be avoided by something called active surveillance which means regular monitoring under the close eye of the specialist. Since PSA became available, the death rate from prostate cancer has gone down, so it does save lives. So why wouldn't a man have a prostate cancer test? Well, there are about six reasons at least, and I'll, I'll go through these for you. Firstly, prostate cancer is usually very slow growing. So if a man's really old or unwell with other medical problems and is, and is life expectancy is reduced, say less than seven years, then it is usually not a good idea to be tested because you wouldn't really have treatment recommended anyway. Also, PSA is not a specific cancer test. It's a test for a protein made in the prostate. So if it's high, all it means something is going on in the prostate. It could mean a benign overgrowth, or it could be infection, or it could mean cancer. Secondly, a high PSA usually means you need to have more tests and this can cause anxiety for some men. 
Number three, if the PSA is high, you would need a biopsy to sort it out, and this would be under sedation or anaesthetic. Having a biopsy can occasionally cause serious bleeding or infection that can land you back in hospital. And very rarely, a man can even die from infection after a biopsy. Number four, a harmless low-grade cancer might be detected, and this can cause a lot of anxiety for the man, even though the cancer is unlikely to cause any harm and doesn't need treatment. Number five, Treatment of prostate cancer with surgery or radiation has side effects, and that can cause bladder incontinence, bowel symptoms, and erectile dysfunction. Number six, the PSA test does not pick up a small number of cancers, so it's possible it could give you a false negative. Well, now I'm completely confused. Yes, there's quite a bit to consider, but the key points are, PSA testing can significantly reduce your risk of dying from prostate cancer. It might cause a harmless cancer to be detected but these are often not actively treated these days. The procedures to detect and treat prostate cancer may have significant health and psychological side effects. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to do. There is a lot of information. I can give you a couple of leaflets if you'd like to take home with you, maybe discuss with your wife and just go over what we've talked about. Would that be helpful? No, that sounds really good, yeah. Okay, well, here's a really good information sheet. Here's a referral for the PSA test. So I'll give that to you now. So if you do decide to go ahead and have the blood test, could you please call the surgery about three or four days afterwards and find out the result and then we can go from there. Any questions? Uh, no, not really. I, I'm i still not sure about it. Um, I'll, I'll give it some thought though, but thank you. My pleasure. Go away and have a think about it and don't step on any more nails. <laughs> with Bob, I discussed the option of PSA testing with him gave him information on both the benefits and harms and provided him with access to his decision aid and a slip for him to go away and have the test after he had considered the options. If the PSA result came back elevated, then I would contact him and follow up as per the guidelines. Andrew is another new patient. He is 65 years old and has come in for his flu vaccination. On taking a full history, I discover that his father died of prostate cancer at the age of 69, having been diagnosed at 59, and last year his brother was diagnosed with prostate cancer at age 58 and underwent radiation treatment. Andrew, I note you have a family history of prostate cancer. Have you ever considered being tested for prostate cancer? No, not really. Should I? Well, I think it's important in your case that you at least know about it and know what's involved in the test so you can go away and think about it. Before we go ahead with that, I'd like to ask you about symptoms relating to the prostate and the waterworks. I mean, do you get up to go to the toilet a lot at night? No, I sleep right through. Okay, great. Do you have any trouble uh, stopping or starting the stream? No. Any dribbling or blood in the urine? No. Okay, that's good because... Uh, if there are symptoms, the recommendations are a little bit different. The risk of a man developing prostate cancer increases as he ages, but also if there's a family history of prostate, ovarian or breast cancer. Oh, oh really? Yes, yeah, so the fact that your father and your brother have both had prostate cancer increases your risk three times more than the average man. Uh, do you have any other siblings in your family? Yeah, I have two younger brothers, Yeah. and they're both okay as far as I know. That's good. The more people in your family with prostate cancer, the greater the risk. The recommendations at the moment suggest that a man with your family history should be offered prostate cancer testing from the age of 40. A man with an average risk, no family history, they'd be offered from the age of 50. I haven't had any tests for prostate cancer. Uh, I didn't know I had to. Well, you don't have to have a test at all. I just want you to know about it and to go away and consider the, the pros and cons of being tested. But I think it's important in your case to know about it and for your brothers to maybe talk to their GPs about it. So when we talk about prostate cancer, we talk about um, having a PSA test. That starts the ball rolling. This case demonstrates the importance of family history for particular cancers. It was important to make Andrew aware of his increased risk and the importance of testing while being clear about the potential risks and his options. Increased risk also impacts the recommended age of starting PSA testing and when to refer to a urologist, as set out in the guidelines.
The 2016 NHMRC guidelines for PSA testing for prostate cancer are available on Health Pathways, the PCFA website and the Cancer Council Australia guidelines wiki site. The guidelines apply to men with no symptoms. A family history of prostate, breast and ovarian cancer is important in determining the risk profile of each man and impacts the recommendations. Take home decisional aids or leaflets can be helpful. The guidelines have moved away from the GP deciding whether or not to offer PSA testing to the GP providing evidence-based information as part of a discussion about both the benefits and harms of PSA testing with the patient. The man can then provide informed consent or informed refusal. It is not appropriate to order PSA test as part of a battery of tests without the man knowing. Health Pathways summarises information as well as guides what to do in the case of an abnormal result. Finally, shared decision making takes time. The patient might need to come back for another appointment to discuss everything.